everybody, my name's Simon. Welcome to Storytime. This story is called Jib the Vampire Bar Girl. Now for you, my subscribers, be warned, this is many parts to this story and I will tease you along the way and there'll be plenty of cliffhangers so if you want to leave now please do the story is based on true facts and it starts about 15 years ago Peter English tall six foot two very thin, skinny, anemic white skin, designer glasses, a silver banded Rolex Oyster watch, 21st birthday present from his mum and dad. Job, computer programmer, extraordinaire, geek, working for many companies as a contractor started his own company working from home or from anywhere in the world with his new business house three bedroom mother and father gave him 50 percent of the money as a deposit on the house and he has a mortgage for the rest house is in his name solely girlfriend sweetheart from school age 30 31 and peter 31 six months after moving into his house at the age of 31 his girlfriend his sweetheart his love on saturday lunchtime announced to him that she was leaving him she now is moving in with her girlfriend she's now gay goodbye packs her bags walks out of the door gone that was the only girlfriend Peter had ever had from in, in his life broken-hearted two years go by doesn't go near another woman cannot get over his girlfriend and is quite depressed, fed up with life. Peter decides at the age of 33, he can run his business from anywhere, anywhere in the world, from his computer, his laptop, bits and pieces. He decides he's gonna travel. His parents have said he needs to get out into the world, maybe find himself another partner. He rents his house out, six month contract with a local company, six months at a time. Books around the world ticket, packs everything up, heads off. Now he spends this two years, goes to America first, starts off on the east coast in Washington, has a look around LA, San Francisco, goes over to Hawaii, carries on working, making money, making good money, ends up in Fiji for a while, then New Zealand, doesn't like New Zealand, moves on to Australia. Six months wandering around different parts of Australia, seeing the world, still no girlfriend, no luck. From Australia, he moves on to Indonesia, to Bali, spends a couple of months, he likes it there, it's relaxed. Finds himself a couple of casual girlfriends. He's starting to forget the school love of his life. He moves on to Malaysia, goes across to Cambodia, Vietnam, 
up to Lao, and then finds himself in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Almost two years traveling. A little weary, business is fine, wants to settle a bit, but doesn't want to come home yet. He finds himself a studio apartment in Chiang Mai, and it's rented month by month, all in the bills. He can easily afford it. Chiang Mai, why? The digital nomad capital of Thailand, a very good internet connection. It's where West meets East. There's Western food, Eastern food, Western culture, Eastern culture, lovely people, complete mix, and a lot of computer nerds, geeks, for Peter to mingle and talk to. Absolutely loves it there. He's found a place to settle for a while. He finds some local bars, finds Thai women. He has casual relationships, but nothing serious. His work's on his mind. He's not worried. His family are fine, in good health. The house is fine. They check up on with the agent and the house. Everything's fine. So here he is in Chiang Mai at the age of 35, single. Money in the bank. Good salary coming in off his work. And he decides he's going to have a little wander around Thailand. Now he's got his base in Chiang Mai. And for a few months he wanders all to the, all the usual spots. He does the tourist spots. He goes down to Bangkok. He goes to Canton Chanaburi. Wanders down. Wahin on the train. Down to Phuket. Cross. Does the islands of PP. James Bond Island. And he Krabi and Samui. And he comes up and finds himself in Patea. That blows his mind. Thousands of bars, thousands of women, thousands of expats, thousands of tourists. It's like a huge sweet shop, candy shop. It's like you've never seen in your life. It's just mind blowing. It intrigues him. But he prefers Chiang Mai. He stays there for a few weeks. He sees it. He gets a few girlfriends. And decides it's not for him. He doesn't want to stay there any longer. He's seen enough of Thailand. But he wants to go back to Chiang Mai. And uh, have a bit more time there. So he does. He travels back up to Chiang Mai. Now he's getting to know quite a few of the local expats, the d digital nomads, um, none of which bother him in the computer side because his business is good, it's specialised, no one can copy it and he's earning good money. So he is really set up. One night after quite a long day sat in front of his laptop he thinks I'm gonna have a night out and off he trots, um, he stops off at a restaurant, gets some food, bumps into another couple of lads, again nomads, and they tell him about um, a go-go bar in the area. He's not been to the go-go bar in Chiang Mai, he had a couple of uh, visits in Patea to go-go bars, you know, okay. He decides to tag along with the boys. And they go to a, a beer bar first, next to some Thai boxing, uh, Mai Thai boxing ring. There's a couple of open bars. They sit down there for a while. And whilst he's there, before they go to the go-go, a girl comes up to him um, by the name of Jib. Really young girl, young looking girl. Very, he'd not seen a girl like this one anywhere on his travels. She was wearing a one piece catsuit. 
um, that quite a few of the bar girls wear sort of open open at the back and straps and it looks as if somebody has painted this outfit on it didn't leave anything to the imagination and it was striped a bit like a flag and Peter found himself staring at this girl jib she was in the bar the open bar next to where he was sat um, he couldn't take her eyes his eyes off her she was 19 years old <clears throat> and she looked that if not younger five foot six five foot seven quite tall for a Thai girl definitely a girl just from the outfit you could tell she was a girl and he he just kept staring he couldn't believe the beauty initially of her body but then when he started looking at her more she had really lovely long hair and a slightly a look about her face medium brown skin a sort of an Isan look northeast Thailand look she caught a glimpse of him looking at her and she winked at him which is unusual for a Thai girl they don't wink she winked at him and gave him a little cheeky smile but she was in the bar next door so she couldn't come and talk to him anyway he just he couldn't take his eyes off and the other lads sort of nudged him come on we're going to the go-go bar so reluctantly <coughs> he peeled himself away from that seat and they went into the go-go bar just further up the street had an hour in there and he was getting a bit bored it just wasn't his scene the other boys were really into it and they were starting to get drunk and he decided I've had enough here and he said to the boys I'm going I've had enough see you soon and up he went paid his bill paid his bin left the go-go bar and he's heading back to his apartment walking straight past the previous bars he was in and he glanced in no couldn't see Jib not many people in the bars it was uh, getting on a bit time wise anyway off he went home and uh, off to bed for the night next day he found himself thinking as he's trying to work about this girl in this amazing one-piece cat suit he couldn't get her out of his head it was like a movie you know it's love at first sight with her body at first before anything else that evening he decided I'm gonna to go to that bar and I'm gonna I'd like to talk to her I want to see if she's got a brain <laughs> and he does he wanders off he goes around to the, the bar area next to the box and again quite busy there's a, a lot of people in there tonight um, but he goes to the bar where Jib works and sure enough she's there but she's in another cat suit different colors pink and white stripes um, again just stunning he goes into the bar anyway she's talking to another guy and he's looking and he wants to talk to her so he orders a drink and another girl comes up to him and he sort of shrugs her off so he's half watching the boxing in the distance it's not quite in the bit where they have to pay to watch the boxing sort of through the gaps they can see what's going on and he sits and drinks and this guy that's with Jib eventually ups and goes doesn't bar find her lucky for Peter Jib had already clocked him coming in he didn't see her clock him but she clocked him as soon as this guy had gone she was round she remembered him from the night before and she put her hand out to shake his hand she didn't wire him shook his hand introduced herself with broken English but 
you could understand it, you could make it out. And it's, hello, I'm Jib. And Peter introduced himself, asked her to sit down, and ordered a lady drink for her, without even thinking, drink. This Jib had a mischievous look about her. She just had something in her eyes, as if, if she had eyes like sharks. There's sort of no life in her eyes, but very pretty face, very pretty hair, but the body to die for. And Peter was, he was just besotted with her body and looks. That's it. Part one's over already, 15 minutes, sorry guys. That's the intro of Jib, the vampire bar girl. Tune in next time for part two. Bye for now.